Okay. Um, in addition to chapter seven, working with color, we're going to do one more chapter today. Um, I'm going to lead you through one section, and the remainder of it is going to be on your own. I know you can all read directions. <laughs> it's about creating gradients, and um, I know some of you have already made them or figured them out, but it's going to be a little bit more detailed, and you're going to create um, the project in the book. So the one that we're going to work on together is actually towards the end of this chapter. So it's on page 320 in the book. It's called Creating Patterns. And patterns are pretty darn cool in Illustrator as well. Um, Illustrator not only has swatches for colors, they have libraries of, or libraries rather, they have libraries of swatches or patterns. Oh my gosh, all this stuff. So you don't always have to build them from scratch. You can go get them. Um, Patterns are artwork that is saved in your swatch panel, and it's just one tile. So by default, what's a pattern? It's something that repeats. So whatever the one tile is that you see in your swatch panel, that gets repeated over and over and over to make a pattern. And it either gets stacked up as bricks, or it gets stacked as um, off-centered bricks, or as hexagons, and it makes the pattern look differently based on the way they stack it. All right, let's do a file open and navigate to lesson 10 in your Illustrator files. And we're going to open the start file number two. And it is a wedding cake. All right, do a file save as and call this one your name and then cake. <clears throat> And if you have fit all in the window, you're going to see that there's two artboards. There's this main one, and then there's another one with just a weird graphic on it. Um, <clears throat> with our selection tool, we're going to select the tan background on artboard one. And let's just fill this one into our window. So a command zero will kind of center it and get that artboard filled. All right, now on... With this one piece filled, I want you to look over at the right-hand side at your appearance panel. We see that there's a fill that looks like it's a bit of a gradient, and there's a one-point dark brown stroke around it. Over in your appearance panel at the bottom right, there are three dots that are the more dots, and we want to click on that. And that's going to bring up the appearance panel um, in more detail, if you will. And click to drag it down so that you can see that there's more that we can do here, and there are a bunch of different icons. So right now we have a path that is filled with this gradient. We can twirl it open and see what the gradient is and the opacity of it. And we can see that we have a stroke that is one point brown that has the default opacity applied to the stroke. So there's just more details about our path right now, or about the shape that we have filled. At the bottom of this panel, we have some icons. We have add a new stroke, add a new fill, add a new effect. We're going to click on the add new fill button and that's going to add to our stack another fill. So you don't just always have one fill. Sometimes you have two or three and you can see them based on their opacity and other ways that you make them work together. So add new fill. It adds a duplicate of the existing one at the top of the stack. So here's our new fill. We're going to click on this top one, the one that we just added, and we're going to click on the word fill. And is this the one that I wanted to pop up? Not really. Hold on a sec here. We're going to click on the arrow, sorry, to the right of the swatch itself. So that's going to pull up the different swatches that are available to us. Um, there's a swatch in here called Pompadour. It's this patterned one um, in the bottom or in the last main row. And we're going to click on that. And it fills that as a second fill. So that's on top of the other ones right now. There's lots more patterns that we could find if we wanted to. Um, finding those, if you look at Window, whoops, we need to deselect that. Go up to Window with nothing selected and come down to um, 
libraries. Sorry, that's not where I wanted to go. I misread a word. In the libraries, this would be your Creative Cloud library. So if you had patterns, color swatches stored in here, this is where they would show up. What I meant to do was go here and come down to um, what the heck is wrong with me today? I'm having a problem here. Swatch libraries. Why do I not see swatch libraries all of a sudden? Oh my god. <laughs> swatch libraries, thank you. That's where we were before with the color books. In swatch libraries, we have patterns. So we can see basic graphics, dots, lines, textures, um, nature patterns, and if you were to look at any of these, we can go ahead and look at some. Let's look at animal skins. Here is a swatch library of animal skins that shows up for us. I'll show them in large thumbnails so you can see them a little bit better. By clicking on them, they're added to your swatch panel. They're not until you click and add them, but there's a ton of different patterns available. Plus, you can go on the World Wide Web and find searches for illustrator patterns free ones, ones that you buy, whatever. They're all out there. All right, back in our appearance panel. Yep. just to see how we're gonna do this yeah. that's really weird because yeah. it is loaded with this file it should have opened when you open this exact same file all right um, so this top fill if we twirl it open we see the opacity of this layer is currently set at default we can click on the word opacity and we can change this to 20% and that changes the opacity of that fill layer. I tell you, nothing is behaving the way it's supposed to. The, below the top word fill, click the word opacity. Why did that not change? Oh, I don't have it selected. <laughs> That always helps when you have the file or the thing selected. All right, now it behaves. With that selected, clicking on the top fill and making it a 20% opacity makes it bright. Um, have that shape selected again, and just so that it doesn't bump around, if you were still working on this file and you have it where you want it, um, the step we're gonna take next is just kind of a safety feature so you don't bump it. So we would do object from the drop down menu and then say lock selection. That way you can't accidentally move that layer. All right, um, creating your own pattern. So we're gonna create a custom pattern right now. We're gonna save it in the swatches panel and then we're gonna apply it to this graphic. Um, make sure nothing is selected and then go and choose Artboard 2. And we get this um, funny shape up here. And fit in the window if it isn't already. And then with your selection tool selected, you can either marquee select that or you can say select all on active artboard. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to get all four of those lines and then the dot in the center are going to be selected. All right, so if this is the thing that you want to make a pattern out of, you want to tile this over and over, you have to create it on a white background and then select it. And then we're going to go back up to the object menu and we're going to do object and then we're going to do pattern make make a pattern that's going to pop up a new window it says that it's been added to the swatches panel and that any changes we make in pattern editing mode which is over here on the left is going to be applied to the swatch when we exit if you don't want that to keep popping up you can 
can turn off that notice or just say OK. So here's our pattern that we just made. Here is our pattern option box. We're in editing mode and we're in something of an isolation mode. It's showing us how it's going to look with the spacing and the layout the way we have it set up. Um, do a select all on the active artboard. And then we're going to zoom in a little bit to this main piece that we're working on. And notice the active artboard is just this piece. This is what we're working with. Everything else is a little bit dimmed out, but it's showing us how it will look. Um, that's our preview for us. Up here in our pattern options, let's give this a name because that's going to be the tooltip when we hover over it in the swatch panel. It's going to say this. Um, we're calling this cake top. So we're going to name it. If you want to see how this behaves differently, try different options in the tile type. And if you need to zoom out to kind of see how it's patterning, um, brick by row, brick by column, hex by column, hex by row. And then go back up to grid. So the three main tile types that you can choose from are the grid, the bricks, and the hexagon, and then how they're tiled. If you want to look at your preview, so right now towards the bottom of this, we have copies. We have five copies wide by five tall. You can look at how this is going to look patterned in different ways by changing this drop down box. Or if you just really want to concentrate on your one pattern, go back to the one by one preview down here. Click over in a blank area to deselect the artwork. And we're going to take this blue dot and we're going to make a copy of it and place it at the top right corner here outside of this. So how do we make a copy of something? What, uh, what uh, keyboard do we use? Shortcut. Yep, option. Um, well, we're going to drag it. So we're going to click on it and drag it out. And we're going to put a, the blue dot outside of here. So we made a copy of it and we moved it to the outside. Click on a blank part to, whoops, deselect your artwork. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, I'm do that again since I bumped something. Click in a blank part, deselect your artwork, and let's go back to the five by five view. So, did it work? Did it repeat that pattern everywhere? No, right? In the five by five view, we see that extra one that we just made floating out here at the top right. It didn't repeat that everywhere. Any guesses why? Go. Yeah, go back to your one by one view. It's outside of that bounding box. It's not part of the original pattern. The bounding box doesn't include that new one. <clears throat> Over in our um, option window, we have an option that says Size this tile to fit the art. Click on that. Now your bounding box is bigger and it includes that dot. Now when we go and look at it at a five by five view, that dot is there. Okay, makes sense. It had to be included in that original thing. All right, there's also spacing down here, horizontal spacing, vertical spacing. Both of it is set to zero at the moment. <clears throat> if you set it to negative values, they're going to start overlapping and positive, they're going to spread further apart. Um, then how they stack up, if they're overlapped, you can control in this overlap zone. So the left piece is in front, the right piece is in front, the top piece is in front, the back piece is in front. So if you change the spacing, horizontal or vertical here, um, just type in some numbers to see, like a negative 10 and a negative 10. If you use the tab, it'll apply it, and you see how they start um, pulling together and looking different. So switch that back to zeros with your tab.
And when we're happy with how we have our pattern, we have to commit to it. And that's in the top, like up by the option bar where that would be, there's a light gray bar. We have done, cancel, or save a copy. We're going to say done. Where did mine go? And then do a file save. <clears throat> now we want to apply this pattern that we just made. Um, what we see here looks kind of funky, but if you guys look at your swatch panel, you should see a preview for that called Cake Top. And that extra blue dot that we created in it is reflected in that preview over here. All right. Let's go to our previous artboard or go back to artboard number one. Nothing is selected at the moment. With your selection tool, click on this top cake piece. Um, up here to select it. We're going to make a copy of this and paste it in front. So we do edit copy and then edit paste in front. So we have a perfect copy of that stacked on top. Over in our swatch, actually let's go to our properties. In our fill for this piece that we have selected, we're going to click on the fill. We're going to get our swatch panel. And we're going to choose that cake topper pattern that we just made. And that's going to apply it. So it's applied to that top version. Now, if you want to edit your pattern or change things, you can do that as well. Larry? Um, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> Close out your free floating swatches. Click on that. Hopefully that copy that you made is still selected and come over to the fill button. And it should be the last thing in your swatch panel. Not there. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you, yeah, that's definitely, that's actually one of the next things in here. At the bottom of the swatch panel, there is something that looks like a checkerboard, and it says so, show swatch kinds. Make sure it says show all. If you only want to see what patterns you have available, you can turn on just the patterns. If you only want to see the gradients, you can turn those on. Did that help? Show all, get them back? Okay, good. All right, so with this top cake piece still selected, we're going to click on our fill um, swatch to bring up our swatch panel. And we're going to double click on our swatch for the cake topper. That's going to bring us back into this pattern editing mode where we see the pattern options show up. <clears throat> And let's zoom in to our pattern editing mode. With your selection tool, let's click to select one of the blue dots and then hold the shift key and select the other one inside your pattern. And then in our properties panel, we can see that they're currently filled with that blue color. We're going to click on the fill and we're going to change it to be the color brown, that's a global color. It's labeled BG when you hover over it. We're gonna switch it to that. And that's gonna repopulate our pattern with brown dots. And if we're happy with that, up in our top bar that's gray, we're gonna say done. And now we have brown dots on our cake instead of blue dots. Fit the artboard in the window, command zero. Click on this top shape again that has the pattern shape filling it. And we want to scale this. We want to make our pattern smaller rather than these big um, squares that it has right now. So we're going to do object, transform, scale. Object, transform, scale. That's going to scale the pattern 
and not the object itself. We're going to set it to uniform 50%. Scale corners is going to be turned off. Scale stroke and effects is turned off. Transform objects, we are turning off. It is not the object that we're transforming. The only thing that remains on is transform the patterns. And you can click the preview button to see how it behaves. And when you do that, it scales your pattern down to 50%, which makes it a lot smaller. And if that's what you want, remember you're not scaling the object, just the pattern. Say OK. And deselect. And save your file. You've now customized a pattern, you've added it to your swatches, and you've applied it to something. So, your homework is to do the rest of this chapter. So starting back at the start point, it's all on gradients and blends. Again, make sure that you have the latest version of Illustrator if you're working at home, because there's always been linear gradients and radial gradients, but now there's something new called the freeform gradient, where inside a shape, you can click in random spots and have your color blobs start spreading out in those random spots, rather than being a line or being a radial. So the jellyfish is what your homework is. I'll have a drop box for it, and it'll be due by the start of class next week. Next week, we're going to move on to another chapter. I'm going to give you your next big project in work time. So that's where we're headed. Any questions? Okay. So chapter 10, the first part of it, we finished the last section of it. So the gradients and blends, the jellyfish poster is what I'm going to want to see in Blackboard. Right. Have at it.